Probably won't shout today. Um, the two questions of our text, they clearly and vividly display the role that holiness plays in our relationship with God. By holiness, Psalms 24 and 4 speaks of clean hands. Clean hands deal with your actions. But check this out. And a pure heart. Pure heart deals with your motives. Amen. That's holiness. Holiness is not just what we do, but it's why we do it. Amen. Holiness is not just bringing the Lord his time, but why you bring the Lord his time. Holiness is not being polite only, but it's why one is polite. Holiness deals with actions and motives. The question was asked, who shall ascend to the heel of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? Psalms 24 and 3, verse 4 says, He that has clean hands, good works, and a pure heart. Good works for the right reason. That's holiness. Amen. Brother Maribel, somebody might get up and, 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 and give a wonderful testimony. And people can be blessed by it. But if you gave that wonderful testimony to, to out-testify someone else, even though people were blessed by what you had to say, God considered that a work of iniquity. Because with holiness, it's got to be clean hands and a pure heart. And the holiness that I am speaking of today is not imputed holiness, as in imputed righteousness. The moment we get saved, we are stamped holy. We are stamped righteous. That is righteousness by faith. It is imputed righteousness. We are righteous because God says we are. Amen. The moment you get saved, you go from one category to another. Isn't that wonderful? But that is not the righteousness that I want to talk to you about today. That righteousness will shout you. If we talk about imputed righteousness only, people will run around the church and can just shout and dance because it is the righteousness it is righteousness by faith that God gives us. And I'm glad that he does. But the righteousness that I want to talk about today is a very unpopular righteousness because this righteousness is and holiness is practical holiness. Practical righteousness. Let me be clearer. Just plain living. Living it, walking it out. There is no substitute, my brothers and sisters, for just plain old living holy. I want you to hear me. Amen. You all work with me back there now because I want the saints to hear this. You all work with me. Living right. Practical, where the rubber meets the road, holiness. 
You know what I'm talking about. Getting rid of sin and the wrongdoings that are present in our lives. All of us have areas that we need to work on. Amen. Doing the right things for the right reasons. The Bible says this in Psalms 66 and 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, it will affect my prayers. It says the Lord will not hear me. That is regard to see it. If I discover iniquity there and do nothing about it. The Bible says the Lord will not hear me. And every one of us, you may not believe me, but you're going to, sooner or later, you're going to be in a place where you need the Lord to hear you. You can't reach the pastor. Your prayer, your prayer partner was otherwise occupied. Got to be where you can get through to the Lord. If I regard, to regard is to see, it's to perceive, to know that it's there. What is iniquity? Iniquity is sin. Iniquity is a sin of the heart. Malice. When it's malice, it means a person is conscious of their wrong motives. If there is malice, if there's iniquity in my heart, and I know that it is there, and I leave it there, I just determine this is who I am. This is a part of my makeup. The Lord understands. The Lord knows my heart. If I decide to take that route, you can take that route. But the price is, the Lord will not hear me. And, and listen, I want the Lord to hear me. Even if you don't hear me, I want the Lord to hear me. I, I can live if no one else hears me. But I can't make it if the Lord doesn't hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Sin is a contaminant. It defiles everything that it enters. It defiles everything that it touches if it is allowed to. Hear me today. Well, you'll hear me because you probably won't say amen. Sin is a contaminant. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Genesis 4 and 7, if thou doest well, God was talking to Cain, shall not thou be accepted? It says, but if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. The Lord described sin as a animal crouched at the door ready to pounce on you and rip him to shreds. Sin's desire is to destroy all of us. Moses said this, if you, uh, but if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord. That is, if you don't keep your word, you have sinned against the Lord and be sure your sins will find you out. Numbers chapter 32 and verse 23. Are you with me today? And then James the just said this about sin. He used the, um, the example of uh, childbirth. Of all things. Give. I want you to envision a woman. Having a baby. And James. Uses the illustration. Of a woman. Giving birth. From, from conception. 
the childbirth to make his point. James says, when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. That is, when lust, our own evil desires, sexual lust, lust for ambition, Lust that leads to envy. Whatever it is. When that lust is spurred into action. When we act on it. That means it is conceived. The child of lust is sin. Amazing what people do. And how... We find ways, we figure out ways to do what we lust for. And that is, it brings forth sin. And then sin, when it is finished, that is, when sin is fully grown. When sin is fully grown, the Bible says sin bringeth forth death. Isn't that something? Lust, when it is conceived, produces sin. I see what I want. I see who I want. I see, I see, I see. I'm going after what I want. The act of going after is sin. But sin, when it is full grown. See, sin works for you for a while. Sin is pleasurable for a while. That's why people don't give it up. I wonder what is the mystery of sin. Oh, it feels good. What is the thing about drugs? Drinking. Feel good. What is it about unbridled ambition? Oh, it, 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 it appeals to your pride to be the best and you, you'll do anything to get there. Uh, it's sin. It, 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 it appeals to our fallen nature. And, uh, and, 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 it's, and it's wonderful. It, it works for a minute. I was watching this, this, this movie, White Boy Rick. And White Boy Rick was uh, a white boy living in Detroit whose name was Rick. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, white boy Rick was a drug dealer. And uh, uh, at, at one bus, uh, all the brothers went to jail. And white boy Rick, uh, he, got, he, got, he had some tough things that happened to him, but he built a drug empire. And it worked. Matter of fact, he got with one of the former drug lords' girlfriend. But the next day, it worked until it didn't. And white boy Rick spent the majority of his life in jail when sin was finished. It brought forth death. When sin is finished, relationships die. Think of the marriages that have failed because sin was allowed to finish. When sin is finished, potential is stymied. Think of the people who are living beneath their privileges. They, you'll, you'll never have the job that you could have had. You'll never be the person that you could have been because you allowed sin. canceled your ticket. You, you could have you could have gone all the way but you wouldn't give up that sin. When sin is finished. Sin disqualifies people. Praise the Lord. All the all the 
ladies are waiting for a Boaz. But if you want a Boaz, don't let sin disqualify you from being a Ruth. See, because to get Boaz, you got to make sure that you're Ruth. Say amen. amen. Am I right? Amen. Praise the Lord. You can't, you can't be a, a, a Delilah waiting for a Boaz. When sin is finished. Sometimes the death comes where you can no longer now lead about a wife or marry and get a husband because it was the death of certain things. It's the death of voting privilege. There are people who can't vote because they stayed in sin. They got a felony. And it killed that. Think of, think of what happens. Think of the destructive power of sin. Someone called me the other day. I got a call from a preacher down South Carolina, Georgia way. And uh, he blessed me real good. And uh, he said to me with his southern drawl, preacher, I heard what you were saying about that abortion stuff. I said, yes, sir. He says, I'm so glad you called me. He says, seems to me, preacher, that the problem is a whole lot of folk are just having sex with people that they ain't supposed to be having sex with. He is a hundred percent correct. Think of the price that we pay because of our immoral, sinful behavior. It's worse now, but these are 2010 numbers. The 5 million abortions is greater than the 2010 population, the 56 million, excuse me, it's more now, is greater than the 2010 population of the following states combined. Michigan, Alabama, South Carolina, Louisiana, Kentucky, Oregon, Oklahoma, Connecticut, Iowa, Mississippi, Arkansas, Kansas, and Utah. Since Roe v. Wade, we've aborted more babies as of 2010 than the combined population of these states. 2019 census for the state of North Carolina, 10,506,879. Since Roe v. Wade, the number of aborted black babies, just blacks alone, are 18,311,000. 34. Almost twice the number of our state has been aborted. There's a whole lot of people having a whole lot of sex with folk that they ain't supposed to. Most recent numbers given uh, as of 2018, 56 million. 246,800 abortions were performed in the United States since Roe v. Wade. And uh, I want to say this, and I know this is, this is true in, in, in the black communities, 
it's true probably overall that 98% of the time, the abortion is a form of birth control. It is not due to the life of the mother. It's not due to rape and incest. You know, the things they bring up. But what about rape? What about incest? What about for the life of the mother? Less than 1% of, of abortions are for the life of the mother. Less than 2% is for rape or incest. Overall, it's to get rid of a nuisance. Sin. Sin. When sin is finished. And I haven't, I haven't really talked to you because I don't want to frighten anybody and, and we're all covered if you you forgiven, God's forgiven you. But, but th th there's a line that makes you think that you can just walk away. You, you have, they have interrupted a natural process. The body doesn't think that it's pregnant. It is. And once that happens, processes are triggered. Getting ready for the baby. Her body knows nine months from now, you're going to need some milk. Various things. And it has been artificially interrupted body has to regroup you know you don't hear me and 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 brothers uh, we're not out of it because 81 percent of the time if the brother would support the child the mother would give birth sin sin well we did try to sing to you earlier Bible says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 that the wages of sin, the provisions of sin, the soldiers pay, the wages of sin, the recompense of sin, that which is to be eaten with bread, wages, the wages of sin, the Bible says, is death. I'll tell you one thing is for certain. That free love movement of the 60s, took off in the 60s and exploded in the 70s. Uh, that, that free love movement lied to us because we've learned 50, almost 60 million dead babies later more sexually transmitted diseases than we have medicines to treat. We've learned that free love has been everything but free. There's one heck of a cause attached to free love. Praise the Lord. I, I can understand some of the younger people adjusting in their thinking because you are told certain things in school and all this, and so some of this is combating what you, what they're trying, what these wicked folk are trying to tell you. But I don't, I don't understand some of you older folk who, who look uncomfortable. And you've been in holiness in the church all your life. You should be waving your hands, saying, "He's right," because you were, you were raised on this. I look at, I see, I see. I see folk whom I would expect to be whipping going, mm, what, what you doing? <laughs> or, or, or have you allowed the behavior of children and loved ones to warp your sense of right and wrong? Have you changed your beliefs because your child wouldn't do right? If the child don't do right, right is still right. The Bible is still right regardless to who obeys. Free love. It's not free. And let me warn you, 1 John 
In chapter 5, verse 16, the B clause warns uh, that sin can get you killed. Amen. If it's allowed, uh, if it's allowed to continue, uh, uh, it will get you killed. The believers continue to engage in it. It can lead to premature physical death. First John chapter five verse sixteen says, "And there is a sin unto death." I do not say that he, he should pray for it. If you, what is he saying? If you stay in sin. Too long, and it gets you killed. There's no point in praying over that. It's too late. What is the point of this? He's warning the believers, come out while there's time. Don't let caught make you come out. Don't let death be the reason that you come out. Come out because God has been good to you. And have shown mercy. Praise the Lord. This is tight today. A careful study, careful peruse of the book of Ephesians, and uh, the same is true with the book of Colossians. If you look at it, you will see where, in Ephesians, for, for example, from chapters 1 through 4, and in chapter 4, verse 1 through 16, these chapters are filled with the great mysteries of the Christian doctrine. Paul talks about how we were uh, uh, determined and we were in him before the foundation of the world. I mean, deep stuff. T talking about uh, the earnest of the spirit and all of the wonderful privileges that we have as believers. I mean, it's deep in how he wants us to be able to apprehend with all saints, what is the height, the depth, the length, uh, and, uh, and the height of the Lord, and, and to know the love of Christ, and, and that which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Tells us there is one God. One body, one spirit, and oh yeah, one God, one Father of all, who's above all, through all, and in you all. One, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I mean, talks about all of the deep things of the Christian doctrine. But in chapter 4, verse 17, he says, this I say, therefore. That's a, that's a reason why I taught you all of these things. I put the depth of the doctrine in you. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of, your, of their minds, having their understandings darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance of that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have have given themselves over to lasciviousness that is sexually no restraints men with men women with women men with women women with men that they're not married to people with animals all kinds, no restraints, uh, a willingness to do anything, working all uncleanness with greediness. Then he says, but you have not so learned Christ. You have not learned this way of life in Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you should put off concerning the former conversations, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitfulness of lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man, which is after God, is created in righteousness and in true holiness. Wherefore, now you get to the meat of the matter. Wherefore, put away lying. 
speak, in every, speak every man truth to his neighbor, for we are members one of another. And be ye angry and sin not. And let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor working with his hands. That which is good that he may have to give to him that need it. Let no com corrupt communications proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good uh, to be used for the edifying. Uh, that it may minister grace to the hearers. And, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. He goes to practical holiness. He moves from the mysteries to how we walk. How we live. Praise God. Chapter 5 verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love. As Christ have also loved us and have given himself for an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. But, but fornication, pornea, any illegal sexual activity, but fornication and all uncleanness, uh, that's natural, natural uncleanness and immor immorality. Or covetousness, greed, let it not be once named among you as become of saints. Now it's named among you. It's named. He said, let it not be once named. Among you as saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient. That's why I'm not for these so-called Christian comedians. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which is not convenient, but rather the giving of thanks. Amen. That's proper. It's always proper to thank the Lord. Amen. It's proper to thank the Lord. But it's not proper. It's, but it's not proper to engage in foolish speech. Amen. But it's proper to thank the Lord, and many of us engage more in foolish speech. Praise the Lord. Then thanking the Lord. And if you read on, you'll see all of these practical instructions. It even deals with the husband and the wife submitting yourself. Verse twenty-one. One to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as unto the Lord. Husbands, the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Tell the husband to lead the wife. Tell the wife to love the husband. And then chapter 6, it deals with the parents and the, and the children. The, the, the point is he takes a drastic, practical turn. Because, no, listen, we can be as deep as all get out, but at the end of the day, you got to live this. We see the same pattern with the Ten Commandments. Commandment number one. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Number two, thou, uh, Exodus chapter 20. Number two, thou uh, shall make no graven image. Praise the Lord. The third commandment, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord God in vain. The fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath, keep it holy. But the fifth, honor your father and your mother. See, you can't do the last five without being uh, getting the first four right. But when you get the first four right, they are, you get them right so that you can do the next five. I was talking to a, my, my chief of staff the other day, and he said, you know, I believe, and I agree with him 100%. He said, I declare that the Ten Commandments were given so that society could function, and it would keep us from killing each other. And think about the violence and the wickedness and the profanity and the, and the degradation that's taking place in society as we move away from the Ten Commandments. As we, as we no longer stress, honor thy father and thy mother. As we no longer stress, thou shall not murder, thou shall not kill. 
What about this one? Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's number seven. Number eight, thou shalt not steal. My God, we need to go uh, all over the country, Wall Street and everywhere, and preach, thou shalt not steal. The ninth command, commandment, thou shalt not bear false witness. Oh! Kavanaugh could have used this one a few weeks ago. Folk were making up stuff. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Then the tenth commandment, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor, covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Or anything that belongs to thy neighbor. Bishop, why, why is this so important? Why are you emphasizing this today? I'll answer it. Because work and worship do not sanctify sin. But sin contaminates work and worship. See, we can do the work. We can sing the songs. We can preach the sermons. We can do the dance. We can, we can have a good service. But that stuff, if we do all that and hold to our sin and hold to our idols and hold to our wrongdoings, our doing these things will not sanctify the sin that we're holding on to. But the sin that we're holding on to will most certainly contaminate those other things. Because Samson wouldn't do something about his relationship with Delilah, his relationship with Delilah did away with him. There has to be a sanctification, praise the Lord, if we're going to continue to worship and serve the Lord. This is what Jeremiah went, meant when he said, break up that fallow ground. Chapter 4, verse 3 through 4, and it says, sow not among the thorns. So we can't just sow and shout on top of any and everything. Amen. Amen. I, I'm almost finished, believe it or not. Amen. Because I, I, I don't know if there's any going to the top. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3 says, Thus saith the Lord uh, to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up! Your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskin, not the physical circumcision, but the foreskin of your heart. Ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doing. Holiness plays a major role. Well, the feast of the tabernacle had ended. The work of the temple had resumed. A couple of months had passed and Haggai the prophet has a date with death. This old prophet, an old novice. You don't see that often. Old novice. With a ministry that lasted only three months. He's on his way home. And uh, they are working on the temple. 
And he had already preached to them and challenged them. Yes, sir. He challenged them and in chapter 1, he challenged their uh, unwarranted contentment. How can you be content to live in your sealed houses while the house of God lay waste? And then in uh, his second message, he challenged their unwarranted discontentment. For in chapter 2, verse 3, he says, Who's among you who saw this temple in its first glory? How do you see it now? Is it in your eyes as comparison as nothing? See, they were content when they shouldn't have been. And discontented when they shouldn't have been. It's amazing what we settle for. It's amazing what we settle for. It's amazing what gets us angry and what gets our gold and what doesn't. Oh, I said the other day, and uh, many of you responded, thank you. We can slaughter millions of babies, black babies by the hundreds of thousands, and you can't find the NAACP. Can't find the Urban League. You can't find these civil rights organizations. But let one man, let a white man put on blackface and we come out of the woodwork. I'm not justifying blackface, but I am saying, how can murder not move you? How can the slaughter of the innocent not shake you up? And somebody in a 36-year-old picture get you out in the streets rallying, but you wouldn't rally for the babies. How is it, uh, here God said, that you could be so content living in your seal houses and letting the house of God lay waste? Mm -hmm. And now you're upset because now we're working on the house of God and you don't think it's big enough. He said you, you get upset at the wrong things and you settle for too little. And here he is now in the ninth month, two months after he delivered the message about the house and the comparisons. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, call together some priests. I want you to visualize this. It was like a question game. God Almighty, here's the preacher. And he said, gather uh, some priests. What is it when we get people to sit at the head table to take questions? Yes, I need a panel. Give me a panel of experts. And let the experts be the priests. So yeah, there stands the prophet. And now there's a panel. And then the prophet gathered the people together. And said to the people, you can ask the priests two questions. And question number one had to do with uh, if a priest or if somebody is carrying some food in their garment. And that food is holy. The flesh is holy meat to be offered to the Lord. And if that meat touch some of the other things, if it touched the pottage, if it touched the wine, if it touched the oil or any other meat, they said he wanted to know, says, will that holy meat sanctify the other meat and the answer is no it won't and the priest answered rightly they said according to the law of Moses if a holy meat touch a regular uh, a food it will not sanctify the food thank you Jesus what's the point holiness is not contagious oh I wish that it was I wish that you could transfer holiness the way we can transfer the flu. I wish we could transfer holiness the way people can catch pneumonia. Mm, wouldn't it be wonderful that if somebody who had holiness would just sneeze and the sneeze land on a surface and you happen to touch that surface and you've caught holiness. 
but the truth is you can't catch it. Oh Lord, it's, it's not contagious that way. Just because your mama is holy, that don't mean that you are. Just because your daddy is holy, you're not holy by committee. You don't get holy because the head of the household is holy. Thank you, Jesus. Every man has got to stand before God himself. Doesn't matter what church you go to, just because you are a member of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, that doesn't mean that you're holy. Holiness is not a collective thing. It's an individual thing. Hallelujah. But then they, they changed it. They said, well, what if, Lord God, some food that is unholy, what if not food, but what if somebody who have come in contact with a dead body, what if they touch the bread or the pottage, the wine or the oil, will these things be made unholy? Sad to say, but the answer is yes. Righteousness is not contagious, but evil is. That's why the Bible warns evil communications, corrupt good manners. I want to warn the young folk, beware of who you hang with. Beware of who you're company with. Beware of who you keep company with. Because evil communications will mess you up. This is what's wrong with the church today. We're trying to welcome everything. We're trying to bring in everybody. But we're not called to bring in everything. We're not called to bring in everybody. We're called to be separate. Say if the Lord come out ye from among them and be separate. Say if the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. Hear me if you will. I know, young brother, it's cool to be cool. I know you love the accolades of the ladies. It would be something wrong with you if you didn't love it. I know you love being Miss Congeniality. I know everybody wants to be popular and be accepted, but these things come at a price. Hallelujah. I want you to go to college, but on the college campus, don't you let that professor talk you out of holiness while you're there. Tell the sororities and the fraternities that you're already in a group, that you've already been to the water and you've been baptized. Tell them that your soul has been converted and you feel all right. Can I get a witness? Oh Lord, you can't let the devil rub off on you. No matter how clean you are, no matter how clean you may be, if you hang around in a coal mine, if you hang around in a toilet, if you hang around a dirty place, some of that defilement is going to get on you. Some of us are trying to walk real close. You're walking the line. You're trying to be saved and lost at the same time. You're trying to be accepted by both groups. But I hear the Lord saying, who's on the Lord's side? Who will make that stand for the Lord? Yeah! Yeah, Lord! We are a holiness church, but we can't be holy just in form. We can't be holiness just in style. We can't be holiness just in sound. We can't be holy just in dress, but we got to be holy in our heart. Lord, ah, ah, Lord, create within me a clean heart. Is there anybody here who wants a clean heart? Lord! Oh! Oh, Lord! Clean my heart. Clean my mind. Clean my actions. Somebody help.
help me preach. Clean me up. Get rid of that lust. Clean me up. Get rid of that desire. Clean me up. Pornography. Clean me up. Drugs. Clean me up. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Get rid of envy. Get rid of strife. Get rid of jealousy. Lord. Yeah. Do it in my soul. Do it in my heart. Do it in my mind. Because I don't want my living. I don't want my works. I don't want my preaching to be in vain. So Lord, From the inside out, make me holy, make me righteous, make me clean in the name of Jesus. For he said to them, verse 14, he said, so is this people, so is this nation, so is what? You're being contaminated. And because you won't let me touch your heart. He said, so is this people, this nation before me, saith the Lord. And look at this. So is every work of their hand. Now, uh, Elder Foster, if he said every work, every work, that's got to include the work on the temple also. He say most, every. Say, even in building my house, which is the work that I want you to do, it's my work. But even in building my work, you got to be right. And I don't care how great your offering may be, no matter how big that tithe check may be, no matter how awesome that stuff may be. If your heart is not right. You, you can't, you can't, you can't bribe the God of the Bible. Because you don't have anything that he needs because he's already said in the text, the silver is mine. And the gold is mine. What gold? The gold in your pocket. I can get it. God said I can get it anytime I want to. Anytime I want to, I, I, I have ways to get it. Sick, m most Americans end up in bankruptcy due to chronic illnesses, medical costs. It makes paupers out of millionaires. God says, I, I can get it now. I mean, silver's mine. Gold, I can, I, I can, uh, hey, it ain't nothing. For me to get it. Glory to God. But you don't want that. Just be holy. Let me sanctify you. Holiness. Holiness. It's not contagious. You can't catch it from your neighbor. But you can get it from God. Hallelujah. You can get it from the Lord. Glory to God. Holy works do not make a person holy. Holiness begins in the heart. Apostle shared with me a story yet. The chief of staff shared a story with me yesterday. His son Isaac shared with him that there was a man in their city who was a man who was filled with good Christian values. And somehow the man's daughter got off 
got out, went out into the world and got on drugs and different things. But his daughter ended up taking her own life. A father was baffled that his daughter would do such a thing as any dad would be. He was baffled because they are family. They were a family of good Christian values. But the observation was made that Christian values is not what saves a person. Christ saves a person. Christianity saves a person. You got to give your heart to Jesus Christ. Patriotism, God and country, can't be your religion. There's a lot of people who confuse their relationship with God with being patriotic. And I am a patriotic, red-blooded American. I'm an American. I'm an American. Praise the Lord. I'm proud to be one. Uh, African-American, American. I'm an American. I'm American. Black guy, American. Negro, ninja, whatever you want to call it. An uh, American. But I first identify as a saint of God. What it takes to keep you is salvation. I want the Lord, I want my heart to be right before God. I want my heart to be right. I don't, nor do you, want to be the cause of someone else's contamination. You don't want to be the dead body that contaminates your whole role. You don't want to be the kind of person that everybody you get with, you contaminate. If some of you have, I, I, I could just label you as a wet blanket because no matter how much fire a saint of God may have, when they hang with you, the fire goes out. Oh, God. I don't want to kill your joy. I don't want to come between you and the Lord. I don't want to be that cursed person who was in touch with that dead body. Hallelujah. Neither do you want to play that role in anybody's life. As difficult as sermons like this are to preach, altar calls are even greater to pull off. But if there's someone here today who will say, Lord, my heart. Now, I'm not going to fix it. I'm not going to fix it, make it easy. And I'm not going to fix it and disguise it, you know. But, Lord, I want you to touch my heart. I want my heart right. I don't want to just go through the motions. I don't want to just be a good shouter, a good singer, a good performer, a good pastor, a good bishop, a good preacher, a good exegeter, an expositor, that's better, of the word. I, want, I don't want to just be good at saying it and telling it, as important as that is. I want to be good at living it. I mean no harm and I mean no disrespect. To me, by far, in watching a football game, it is a treat to hear Tony Romo commentate a football game. You haven't watched a football game until you've heard one that Romo calls. Because Tony will tell you what the team is going to do next. And nine times out of ten, he hits the nail on the head. I mean, he's far and away the best. And I feel, Coach, that he found his calling because he's a much better commentator than he was a quarterback. I mean, no disrespect. You would think, as good as he can call a game, they would have won five Super Bowls. 
but he can call that game. I don't want to be good at calling the game. Only. I want to be good at playing the game. Living the game in this. Does that, does, does that, does that, work, that work for you? Amen. If you're serious about seeking the Lord and serious about going to the next place in the Lord and serious about moving beyond things that you should move beyond. Because you, you, know, you, know, you know what we're going to do? We're going to be smart. We're not going to let sin, watch this, get finished. Somebody ought to do this right here. You all look at the devil. Just look down at him and say, hey, I'm, I'm not stupid. See? Oh, no. Oh, no. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we lie. All people have struggles and challenges. And don't try to look up here, those who have no problems, so you're not on the altar. Don't try to look up here and figure out why anybody is standing. Since there's nothing you can do with it anyway. Say amen. Um. But I tell you what, everybody should be saying, Lord, I want, you to, I want you to take this away from me. Father in my heart, Father, 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 in my heart, make me clean. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I want you to accept my praise, my worship, my giving, my sacrifice, my church attendance, and all that I do, Lord. The good deeds that I do for others, the things that I do in your name, I want them accepted, Lord. But I've learned today that sin will nullify my good works. Oh, God. Oh, God. Touch me right now. In the area of the practical. Give me to practically live the life. God Almighty. Clean me up. So that I can do this thing. In the name of Jesus. Those who are on Facebook Live. Pray with us. Oh, you don't want your works to be in vain. Don't want my, I don't want my living to be in vain. I don't want all, all of this preaching and running up and down the road and so tired sometimes that your body feels like it's breaking down. Lord, I don't want it to be in vain. Take away every contaminant that will cause it to be vain. In the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Heard the Holy Spirit said, the, the, the word that you're seeking for is integrity. Integrity, one, oneness, to be at one. You're the same one on the inside as you're on the outside. You're who you appear to be. One, one. My God, somebody seek God for integrity. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Seek him, seek him, seek him, seek him. Seek him, seek him. Oh, this virtue is more important than a physical healing. This virtue is more important than a financial blessing. <laughs> because if we get this right, the other things will fall in place. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My heart, my mind, my spirit, my soul. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Use me to be an encouragement to someone else. Use me, Jesus. Use me, Jesus. Use me, Jesus. Use me, Jesus. For your glory. And for your honor, in Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. And amen.
If I was preaching in St. Louis, I'd preach this one. Right here. This is what we need. More than anything else. We need to be right with God. And, and, and I'm going on an assignment, and you're going on an assignment. That the Lord will, whatever we find, whatever iniquity that you discover, don't regard it. Give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Amen. Lord, I don't like this about myself. Take this away from me. Lord, this is not good. Take this away from me. He'll do it. And, he'll do it. and, in, and, in, and that way, your good deeds, our, our good deeds, our good works will count. They won't be hay, wood, and stubble. But there'll be gold and precious stone where they're able to stand up under the fire of scrutiny. And the Lord will reward us not just in this life, but in the world to come. God bless you.